This Republican tool is funny. He actually seems to think the current policy keeps gays out of the military. All right, it's your turn to turn the plexiglass table, this fancy table of ours, over on us. You flooded us with emails tonight. Our Out in the Open panel has been going through them. They are ready to respond to you with me again. Independent Women's Forum President Michelle Bernard, Democratic strategist Morris Reed, conservative commentator and constitutional lawyer Mark Smith. Welcome back. Let's start off with this letter from Luis, a Marine. He writes, regarding the issue about gays in the military, I believe that after spending 20 years in the Marine Corps, I can fairly say that having to be in close quarters or with someone who is known to be openly gay can disrupt a military unit. Remember, this is not only about fighting, but about troop morale. The status quo, uh, that would be status quo, should remain in place. Um, you know, I would defer to this gentleman who has been there. I haven't been there, but I, I have to tell you, if I'm in a Fox, so I don't really care. I want someone who's going to be there to protect me, who's going to win, who wants to win the war. Uh, I will defer to him because he's been there, but it just makes no sense what we have going on right now. You know, it's interesting. A, a Zogby poll has come out, a, a, a poll by uh, the Pew Research Center has come out, and what they are showing is that a lot of most, the vast majority of the people in the military today, um, people who are actually out fighting the wars that this nation is fighting, um, say that it doesn't really matter to them anymore. Ten second rejoinder, and then I'll let you start off with the next email. Sure. Look, we've had Don't Ask, Don't Tell since 1993. We have the greatest military force in the world. Why would we engage in a social experiment in a time of war? We shouldn't. This next email is from somebody who didn't want us to use their name. Uh, quote, I served in the Army from 1999 to 2006, and toward the end of my time in the military, I came out to my friends and subordinates. To my surprise, I found that no one really cared at all about my sexuality. They only wanted a good leader that could do his job. One of the reasons I did not re-enlist is I could not stand fighting for the American way that went out of its way to exclude me, even after I was willing to put my life on the line for it. If I could serve openly in the military, I would re-enlist tomorrow. And that is not the only email we've seen like that. Sure, but bear in mind, Paula, we're talking about a fighting union of 2.6 million people. Sure, there's going to be anecdotes going every way, but to me, at the end of the day, if the military thinks the best way to fight wars, and that's what the purpose of the military is, is to fight, win wars, and protect our nation, not to engage in social experiments. If they think that the don't ask, don't tell policy is working, I say, let's defer to the military and not engage in politics about it. And you say this is not about a social experiment. It's not about a social experiment. It's just about, look, we, we're fighting everyone right now. We need as many people that want to enlist as possible. If someone who's gay happens to be gay, who wants to be openly gay, wants to serve, let them serve. Well, you know, here's the other interesting thing that, that people aren't talking about. It is costing us millions and millions and millions of dollars a year to retrain people to replace all the people that we were kicking out of the army because they have come out and said that they are openly gay. I care about that. I, I want us to win the war, but I also care what's the country doing with my tax dollars. I work really hard for it. Well, you're unhappy with this administration for sure. <laughs>